If you're looking for magic cards, look no further than Flipside Gaming. They have all the latest magic singles and product that you need to actually leave the house and battle in Magic the Gathering. And right now, if you would like to save 10% on your orders from Flipside Gaming, use the promo code CGB at checkout. That is promo code CGB. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and this is a pretty wild day in the arena. We're playing what I would consider a pretty special deck. Is it ramp? One of my Patreon supporters asked if I would make just the jankiest thing, that mo the thing that most epitomized jank to them, or to me, to me, uh, that I could. And I built this is it ramp deck and it's, it's a wild ride. So you can see that early in the game we do practically nothing, just hoping to get to an end game. And we play three copies of Omniscience. And just look at all the 10 drops and you get the gist of what's going on here. Um, the main, so once you get enough mana, all you gotta do, <laughs> once you get enough mana, you can dirtle indefinitely. You can take all the turns, you can blow up all your opponent's lands, you can do all kinds of things, because once you have Omniscience, you can play your spells for free. Once you're playing your spells for free, Apex of Power creates 10 mana and digs you 7 deep, and a lot of other things draw cards. Mirari's Conjecture, getting things back, you can just go into a loop where you can do almost anything. Uh, invent is mainly what we use this for. Search your library for an instant or sorcery card, reveal them, and uh, put them into your hand and shuffle your library. It's very common that we ramp up to 10 mana, we drop an Omniscience. I don't know how common it is, but you get what I'm trying to say. We drop an Omniscience, or we use an Apex of Power to find an Omniscience, and then we use Invent to search our library for Overwhelming Insight and Nexus of Fate. We draw seven, we get an extra turn, we usually Marari Conjecture, get back the Overflowing Insight and the Invent Invert to go get the Nexus of Fate again, and on and on and on it goes. How do we actually win? Well, the idea of actual winning is you could always attack with a Sailor of Means 20 times, but we have exactly one Expansion Explosion, which once we're making a ton of mana with our Apex of Power, then we explode all over them for a million damage. And that's about it. There aren't too many... I, I don't know how much there is to say. I think you have to see it in action and play it and not get run over by red decks. If you are getting run over too much playing the deck, then you probably want some Fiery Cannonade, some earlier interaction, more Sailor Amines. But I built this for the biggest, most extreme possible late game. And often ramping into Star of Extinction can help get you there. So also we have Zephyr and Void, a few Scrylands, a Reliquary Tower, so that we can save all the cards after we build that massive hand and pass the turn. The discard step alone can take up forever if you're going into your Nexus of Fate turn and you have your deck in your hand thanks to Overflowing Insight. And we have an Arch of Arazka. Sometimes you just want to sit there and grind because your opponent is back building counter spells. Against a control deck, you want to take your time and build up a massive mana advantage. And I'm not kidding, sometimes that means you can cast multiple Omniscience and Apex of Power in the same turn. I'm not kidding. We've been there. You just want to play your maps and flip them without sacking your treasures if possible. Get out as many Power Stone Shards as you can get your hands on. Get out Gilded Lotus. Remember that you can use the expansion side to copy a counter spell to push through a crucial spell. And you can always get this back later with Mirari's Conjecture when you go off. All right, I look forward to the games. I, I have no idea what's about to happen. I'll see you there. Oh, well, we've got Map into Shard into Lotus, which can be very good if we draw the land. So I think I keep this on the draw, just spec that we can get there. But being on the draw in general feels like a death null in the format. And here they come again. This is the third Legion's Landing deck in a row that we played. Let's get the map going. I really do need to draw land off the top. Am I willing to scry for it? I think we just go for it, because if we hit the shard on time, that's probably the way that we actually compete in this game. 
Naya. And they have a map. Okay, well that's different. And we brick on the land. Lucky me. Yep, get your scry on. Enjoy every second. Every precious second of scrying. So glorious. So here comes your little vampire. And there's my treasure map. Come on, land. Mm. All right, come on, land. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> All righty then. What's going? Next is a fate gets shuffled back in. So that's a good choice. What is the opponent up to where they have treasure map? Legion's landing into treasure map is not what I call a combo. Not close. Not what I prefer. And there's a war boss. It's about time that showed up. I had a feeling it was part of the equation. I mean, when they go Naya in the token decks, it's usually because they have a love affair with Legion War Boss. And here we go. Land. Hey. What are you doing here? You invited Land to the party. Alright, so play this. Let's get this thing cooking a little bit. I don't think I can get to an Omniscience next turn, and I don't have a Star of Extinction, so we're still in a very terrible spot. I could bounce this, untap, and I have seven. But that's not enough. If I sack these and play Gilded Lotus and Power Stone Shard, I have one and three. Four, five, six, seven as well. If I untap with, if I use Guild Lotus to play second shot, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and possibly nine. That's not good enough. I guess I have to hope to draw a Star of Extinction from this point. All right. Here's the Lotus. Here's the shard. Buy two turns, get the omniscience, do this thing. Five, six, seven, eight. Even if I draw a land, I can only get to not to nine. Boris Locket, this is what it's come to. Here they come, I'm sure. You mentor the lifelinker. Yes! Good job. Down to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not quite dead, according to this. Plus, I have blink of an eye now. And I can definitely get to Omniscience next turn. Do we have a chance? Another blink. Well, I can blink into a blink. That's pretty great. Well, I don't know if pretty great's the right word. It's a thing I can do. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put a stop here so that we can bounce well, if we bounce the war boss going into combat, they'll replay it. So 
I don't think I can avoid the war boss trigger unless my opponent taps their mana really poorly coming up here. So here is another shard. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, it's still nine. Just checking. Just keep checking that it's still nine. Running one fiery cannonade in the deck so I could invent it in this moment is probably a good idea. And something you may want to consider at home. Here's the here's the critter. Oh yes, I can tell you're feeling very good about all your cards. Let's see if you have anything that interacts with me or if you're going to try to attack me to death. Cove draws a card, uh-huh. Now if they tap really low for I don't know what, we could have blinked the war boss and avoided this, but we can still avoid the mentor from the war boss. So let's tap one of these, blue, blue, kick it. So you might think that we can do that before it goes into combat so the token doesn't appear. You actually can't because it goes back into the combat step when you would blink it and the opponent can recast the war boss. So either way, they'll get this little goblin. Here they come. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, if they have a Banefire, I lose anyway. I. Do I hold this for like an Ixalan's Binding? I guess so. Seriously, if they have a way to mass pump the creatures or the right burn spells, it doesn't matter. Oh, they drew so much land this game. I have to feel fortunate that I wasn't completely destroyed. I probably should have been, but we're still here. We missed some land drops, but we're still here saying, if I untap, I cast Omniscience. Omniscience! The war boss returns. Okay. My turn? Do I use this blink of an eye? To get one card deeper? I guess I will. Bounce it again. The opponent's like, hey, quit bouncing my war boss over here. I'm trying to kill you. I just want it I just want to wreck you. There we go. Well, I got something for you. Let's go. Omniscience, baby. You may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. Boom. Invert. Uh, or invent, sorry. Search for an instant or sorcery. And two things we want. One is Overflowing Insight, and the other is Nexus of Fate will do. Actually, no, it won't. We can get this and then do it again. All right, like that. Uh, let's blow up the opponent's board for the funds. Cast Play River's Rebuke without paying the cost. Bounce it all. Sounds really fun. Let's draw seven. Apex of Power is there. Um, I don't know if I want to use it. It's a little risky. As fun as it is. Ah, oh, we didn't come here to not Apex of Power. Let me just make sure that I... See, the thing that's not risky is if I put the Nexus of Fate or the Expansion Explosion in my hand. Nexus of Fate, we could cast off of it, though. So I'll take the Expansion Explosion, which if I, ca if I had to cast this turn, could get me in trouble. Then we'll grab both Apex of Powers. Then we will unleash Apex of Power. Exile 7, make 10 mana. Um, blue mana is fine. Then we will... 
Yeah, why not? Let's 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 help our opponent out by removing their auto yield trigger that their um the things that are causing them to not yield priority. There you go. Make that make that vampire. I'll hit it with a meteor. All right, let's play the Sailor of Means. We still have one time out in the bank. Let's play another Apex of Power. Get up to that 20 blue mana. And there you go. Now what we're missing still, oh, well, they left. We would have to get up to 32 mana, which means we need the rest of our Power Stone shards. But as you see, we were well on the path of insanity. All right, dream hand, map, shard, pillage. Of course, if the opponent goes creature, 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 it may all be for naught. Star of Extinction off the top though. And no turn one creature, no turn two creature. If it's just guy control and it's without blue, this isn't too bad. Let's see what happens. It looks like Boros, maybe, oh, Boros Angels. I hear they love Star of Extinction. So land, shard, I'll go ahead and use my map. And more land is not what I need at the moment. So that can go to the bottom. I guess I'll set an upkeep stop. Aurelia, yeah, the clock is gonna tick. I'm going to, I'm going to be hurting. Make no mistake about that. This isn't, I will not enjoy this. But there's an apex of power. Ooh. Yeah. You got it. I mean, that's what we're here for. That's what we came for. All right. Pirate's Pillage. Discard the Steam Vents. Our, I don't think I want to discard the Overwhelming Insight. I'll probably find another land. Yeah, there we go. And let's pass the turn. This is about to get extreme. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, now the if they have an Ixlons binding, I suppose that could be obnoxious. But even if they bound the treasure map, I think I could still star next turn. I just couldn't apex the following turn. Here it comes. The target is how obnoxious. All right, fine. You're no fun. I hate you. Here comes a lot of damage. Down to seven. All right, spell swindle off the top. That's interesting, but a little late. So let's go for a red and let's drop a bomb, shall we? Down with the angels. They cannot survive mass extinction. An extinction level event. Another Aurelia can put us on the clock. So, what's probably best here is to hold up the spell swindle, however we do that. So if I do the pillage, I can do that. The question is, what do I discard? Maybe I do have to discard Overflowing Insight and rely on Apex of Power to bring it home. I could also Overwhelming Insight myself, draw seven, but that doesn't mean I can cast Apex of Power next turn. Yep, let's go with uh, the Pirate's Pillage. And yeah, I could discard the land, but I really do want to cast this next turn. So I hate it, but I guess I'm discarding the Insight to be safe. And there is a River's Rebuke. We could play that instead of holding up the Swindle. At this point though, I can always use Apex of Power to cast it next turn. And another one, I don't need another one. And we'll pass, and even if our opponent Lightning strikes us, we can Spell Swindle it and win, or not win, but Apex next turn. Which Apex into Omniscience, that's, that's the train we're riding here. And no plays, so here we go. I could bounce them for time. 
But what would the fun in that be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's do it. This would be a terrible time, by the way, for the all-land apex of power. There it is, it's omniscience. Make it blue. Although, God, if I play that omniscience, I can't play anything else except these. <sighs> That's rough. I have one more treasure hiding over here. That is so rough. I guess I can just go into star mode. All right, blue. Let's play Mirari's Conjecture. Next turn, it will get back a Star of Extinction is the idea. And let's play the River's Rebuke, target you. Now they have Ixalan's Binding. They can use that on Conjecture. No! That's really bad. But then I do get another turn, and we do have Blink of an Eye and River's Rebukes. The Immortal Sun. That's not the play. Oh my goodness. All right, there's a Blink of an Eye. We need it, so why not? And trigger this. Get back Apex of Power. Can I cast it? I can't, can I? No, I cannot. Um, overflowing Insight, draw seven. Let the opponent do everything they want to. Star of Extinction would kill their stuff, but meh. All right, let's take this. Hmm. I could do it next turn for 14, but I just want to make sure I have Omniscience ready. And my opponent, if they could kill me, they would have killed me last turn. But what if we just hold up Spell Swindle? Isn't that good enough? Yeah, to counter the Binding? Unfortunately, I can't Spindle, Spindle and Blink. I can Blink, though. I'll just go... Oh, we can Blink the Binding. Let's Blink the um, Immortal Sun. The mana advantage is a big deal. So the opponent gets that back, and then we say go. Our opponent goes to cast either the Immortal Sun again or the Binding, and we swindle it. Then we have a million mana, and we're drawing 14. If I can't win after that, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it, friends. Here it comes again. Say no. Okay, let's do this. Draw 14, make them juicy. It's an omniscience. I don't know if I can get to 10 though. Another star, one, two, three. Ah, oh, I'm at nine? I'm really at nine? All right, let's play another one of these at eight. I can always just, I can always leave my mana up though. It's not the end of the world. But I'm on a double spell turn. Is there any other spell here I want to cast? I guess I can double, I can double invent invert, but that's really, well, I could go get pirate spillage. That doesn't play it for free though. That just spins the wheels some more. Um, this is two. I could double Star of Extinct their land. Nah. Nah, I think I'm perfectly fine hanging out. Two, three, four. I definitely don't want to expose Omniscience to an Ixalan's Binding anyway. I'll also discard the Lotus. All right. This is going to get heavy. 
Here comes the Knight of Grace. Here comes Shalai. Okay, Star gets around that. It's okay. Untap. Scry. Might as well make our last, like, natural draw here a good one. Something that we need. Uh, it's pretty fun. All right, fine. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm a sucker. And this one is over. We'll just see how, how much the opponent wants to take. Omniscience. Star of Extinction. Invent Invert. Nexus of Fate, River's Rebuke, sure. Nexus of Fate, I want in my hand. I don't want to exile it with Apex of Power and be priced into casting it. Oh, the opponent's seen enough. But yeah, so we put our whole deck onto the battlefield. We take an extra turn with the Nexus of Fate. Then we fireball our opponent for a billion. All right, this hand has a treasure map and a Gilded Lotus. Yep, uh, I think we go for it. I think we go for this. So I recruited up my friend Rosado because I was tired of getting scooped on. I haven't got, I haven't been able to show the combo yet and exactly how it rolls. So let's see what happens here. Um, I have a challenge channel in my Discord that you can enter if you're interested in battling. All right, definitely treasure map. I thought about scrying there. I don't know what I need. Uh, I'd, I'd love a Power Stone Shard, but that's pretty ambitious. And the opponent's taking it slow right now, so the Shard might just get sunk a pate or something like that anyway. Treasure Map Resolve, so that's the good news. Nexus of Fate. Yeah, I think I'm... I'm gonna play this and say go and just sit on this void for a minute. I'm still not sure what I'm looking for. Land is fine right now. Here's a map of your own. All right, and they're going to scry now. Sure. And it looks like Jeskai control. <laughs> Dear God. Well, I should probably keep the high impact stuff. It looks like I'm, no, I don't get a window to resolve the Lotus. I don't have enough mana. As we'll take the big things, though. Let's try to find our spell swindle or something else to interact a little bit with. More voids is perfectly reasonable as we just build up our mana. And I guess if they go for Niv-Mizzet, we can go nuts. Let them draw all they want. If we get infinite turns, it doesn't matter. I know it's on top, so I may as well scry as well, but I guess I could wait and see what they do because then I have the option of at least getting rid of the void if I don't want it, but I do. So, it's fine. Land is good. There's a shard. Mana is good. More mana. More problem solving. Also, we're going to leave this up and see if our opponent taps to do stuff, but I guess before their draw step, I'll, I'll go ahead and flip my map. Just in case they had some instant speed kind of interaction that they could draw into, like an Invoke the Divine. And we've already got Nexus of Fate available. And that's plenty of mana. Let's see how they use it. A kindling Phoenix. Great. So I have an interesting play with River's Rebuke that at least gets rid of the treasure. <laughs> All right. Ugh. I can go for this, and if they actually tap out to counter it, I don't... I guess I don't have too much recourse, do I? But they'll probably let the Gilded Lotus resolve. Tough call.
If I throw this at them and they counter it, I don't have anything else to do with my turn. But they're not going to tap their treasures anyway, so the Nexus of Fate isn't going to matter. And besides, resolving that won't do anything either. So maybe I just keep going for big mana, because they won't try to counter these. Just go bigger and bigger. Phoenix isn't a super fast clock, after all. You can still go for it, but I don't think that's necessary. I can draw a card. Did I already play a land? Can't remember. Can't remember. Turn got too complicated. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. But if I hadn't, at least I made the right call. Here comes Phoenix. The legend of the Phoenix. There is land. Okay. So now the strategy is to Nexus of Fate on their turn, get them to potentially counter it, or at least try. Ah, omniscience. Sweet. And I guess I'll say go. Let's see what happens. Opponent's still not doing anything. Find that interesting. All right, here's the damage. So the idea is to draw the Omniscience with the Treasure Cove. Then we go for Nexus of Fate, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Nexus of Fate. I would like an additional turn. The opponent says, okay, cool, my turn. They can probably counter all the things they could possibly want to counter. However, let's try. We have to try. Resolves. What? Okay. Let's try invent... This is a double tutor. Resolves? What is going on? Okay, then in that case, I can go for another Nexus of Fate. Or I can go for the other Invent Invert. It resolved, so this one should too, right? And I'll draw seven? And go for it. It's not even trying to draw with the Treasure Cove. What is this? Are they just... I suppose they could think about only playing for the win con? What on earth am I doing? Let's try this again. Where are we going? Where are we going? I already have another turn coming. So I may as well grab the Apex of Power and the Spell Swindle in case they ever get around to fighting me. Let's drop a star on them, because why not? Okay, here's the draw. It must be a hand just full of creature removal. Let's try the river's rebuke. Hiya! Gone. Okay. We're getting weirded out. Let's play a treasure map. You always want to at least give it a try to scrying a land to the bottom with the treasure map. Because Apex of Power hitting all land is probably the worst feeling in the history of time. Here comes the Apex. 
animations. And let's make blue mana. And okay, sorry. So in my head, uh, let's do it again. And red mana. And now that's enough to lethal almost. We're still looking for a few more power stone shards. 21, 2, 3, 4. Actually we can and we have a zero mana spell swindle, so I'll try it. Am I playing it? If I, oh, I still get to pick X. So I go here and here. <laughs> nope, that didn't work. All right, it's fine. It was a good little test. Apparently you have to play it for zero if you do it that way. Oh, uh, learning. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, got that back. We have a turn after this one, right? Yes, we do. All right, um, anything I need to copy or do silly. Let's cast these out of the exile. We must get them out of the exile. Let's blow up more of your land. Let's cast out this pirate's pillage. Discarding land. Another star. Let's play it. Um, let's invent invert again. The combos just keep happening. And there's the nexus. And no more sorcery, so we'll play this again. And now out of this, I guess I most want another pillage. Just trying to find the power stone shards so that I can rev up and have enough damage but it looks like I'll be able to get there. All right, my turn. So I'll take... the Apex, and I'll take the Apex to generate all that mana. We are going to exile our deck. It's going to be awkward. All right, now let's make all this red mana. Let's do this again. Make all this blue mana. <laughs> There's the shards. Okay, and now we can go for... Expansion Explosion. Make sure we pay for it. For 20. And let's make sure we target our opponent with the draw side as well. And here it comes. And that's game. They don't always have counter spells, kids. Empty library, zero life, and a really big hand. Hmm. On the draw, this hand is so slow, but yet so tempting. You've got to give it a shot. So I recruited a friend to play a few games. I have a channel on my Discord for finding matches and I posted in there that I was looking for somebody to play with because everybody I've come up to so far, I haven't been able to show the killer combo. So the condition of playing the game, of course, is that if I combo off, they have to let me show the combo. And if not, they get to beat me senseless. So this is Rosado. And uh, special thanks to them for stepping up and taking a few games. Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe I won't be thanking them. 
Uh, uh, I guess I'll shuffle the Nexus back in. <laughs> They're probably thinking, oh god, Nexus. Alright, let's pass that turn. Hmm. Let's hope that we can resolve this pirate's pillage. And the opponent's just going to stare at us, so probably not. Well, let's see if they've got something for this. Do you want to use a counter spell on a power stone shard? No, they don't. Okay. Interesting. If we untap, maybe we just sit here and stare at them with our spell swindle. Or we could play a Sailor of Means that's likely to die. I think we sit and do nothing, though, actually. Because a Pirate's Pillage is likely to get countered. Anything that counters gets this back in the hand and can help them fix their draw. They missed a land drop. So I believe we can make them potentially just start discarding to hand size and get them to flinch. Plus, they don't know about Spell Swindle. Well, they top deck the land. This is fine, though. I do think that we both sit here and do this for a while. It's all right. I'm the one who needs big mana to do everything. There's a treasure map, which is excellent for sneaking onto the board. Something so cheap that they probably would be afraid to counter it. And here's a ravenous chupacabra with two mana open. I'll go for a swindle on it. They might have a negate, but a syncopate won't won't help them. Boom. Boom. Resolves. No negate. What do you think? Are they are they rope are they slow rolling me? God, syncopate would stop this too. It would counter it, but how else do I get to do it? I think I can just try to build up mana. Let's see if my opponent... Yeah, I think we I think we have to be a little bit patient. Our opponent might take the apex of power, but I think we just have to build up our resources for a while. So this dying, what kills it? Not too much. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. I know. So risky. Dropping sailor or memes. I think that the things that get... Yeah, so... I... Our opponent... I'm reading a syncopate. I might be wrong. I'm willing to be wrong. But since I'm not under pressure, I have the luxury of time. I can take my time and try to work my way around these things. Because I'm gaining an advantage each turn that goes by. Because I have stuff going on on the board. I guess I do want to draw this because then I play around that syncopate. And I get to scry. Pop. Possibly get that one closer to omniscience. Here we go. Let's go. Nope, don't need you. I think we go for it now. If they have a negate, they didn't use it earlier on the spell swindle, and I think that would be a big a big mistake. And if I fail, may I be brave in the attempt. That's ten. So this way I float an extra mana. And fire it away. What you got? Resolves? Oh no, everything else is land? Oh, I... No! How... How the hell... I was trying to look at the exiled cards, and look what it did! It made green mana. Can I go back? I can't go back on that. Ah! What is happening to me? Okay. Let's sack this for a red. And let's go for a pillage. That, if it resolves, at least can fix our mana. And we're still playing around the syncopate. There's the syncopate. And there's another Apex 
This is double red, though. This, I can go for a red and a blue, though. So blue, red. What am I getting? What can fix the mana situation? Nothing, right? Nothing. God, so bad. God, what a train wreck I've created. But we only have this mana for the turn, so I should go for it. Let's see, one, this flips next turn. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, again. So I can Apex again next turn, potentially. All right, fine. God, this feels horrific. But let's go get some stuff. And what do we want? A Nexus of Fate and a Draw 7 seem good. And we'll scry. <laughs> and another Power Stone Shard. I mean, we need them. Do I need them now? Oh no, I'm about to exile my win con, the explosion. So my new win con is going to be milling the opponent out with overflowing insights. Uh, God, this bit me. This bit me so hard. Um, yeah, let's keep it. Big mana is kind of what we're going for. God, I blew the combo. I'm the worst. I'm the absolute worst at the magic. Here's Doom Whisper. And, all right. So we flip you. Let's play you. Three mana. This basically nets the same. We go for the map. Don't need you. All right. It says I can play the Apex of Power. Then if I hit Omniscience, I'm good. Let's go for it. We didn't come here to not do this, did we? But let's make some blue mana this time. What do you say? What do you say, team? I'm not touching anything until I touch the blue mana. There's still no omniscience, by the way. What if I do red mana and I cast the pillage to make the blue mana? No. We're just going to do the blue mana so that we can cast Nexus of Fate for sure. Well, if I use three mana, let's see. I'll play the Sailor Means. I would go down to six if I use the Pirate's Pillage. So yeah, we're going to Nexus. Man, Omniscience, what the hell? Help me, help a brother out. Of course, you know, I could help my darn self and not play like a... play horrific magic. All right, redraw. Scry. Gilded Lotus, no thank you. Make some mana. Target myself. Draw seven. There's Omniscience. But no Nexus of Fate. I guess I need to star. That is what I'm feeling right now, because if the opponent gets to do this Doom Whisperer thing, I'm going to lose for sure. They'll just always have a clock, and they'll counter everything I do for the rest of the game. Once we get to Omniscience, we can get back an instant, which is Invert Invent, which can search for another sorcery and an instant. But they pass the turn. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> it's a lot of mana. Let's see if we can go for a treasure map. No counter. Let's see if we can go for a Gilded Lotus. 
No counter. Big mana, baby. All right, then I'll wait for them to do something. Yeah, they're, if, if they have another syncopate, I think I can get through that. I just have to be careful. And we can draw with the arch. There's another map. There's another nexus. So we can't get our nexus syncopated. They can syncopate for five, so we can definitely pay more than that. Let's start with another map. And let's try passing the turn. If they do anything, if they even move a muscle, I'm going to Nexus for multiple turns. Okay. Wow. Let's Nexus first, so at least we have another turn and see what the opponent picks. I don't think they know that our only win con now is the overwhelming, the overflowing insight. But yeah, just run unmore to you go. So what happened there? Nexus grabbed. Yep. What do you do? I guess you're a thing I can do. What else could you ask for? Keep it coming. Another omniscience. So we could double omniscience? Maybe? Do we have 20 mana? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, we have 20 mana. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember the treasure map. Always remember the treasure map. Here's Omniscience. Resolves. Fun. I guess I'll double it in case the opponent has something to do about that. Then they sabotage the second omniscience? What's the plan? What is the plan? All right. Let's invent some stuff. Uh, it looks like my options are two. Let's play the Mirari Conjecture. We don't have another turn at the moment, but we can get the Spell Swindle. And we're not going to have another turn, of course. Our opponent saw to that. And then we'll save our, our Star of Extinction to double star our opponent. We also have this thing where we could bounce, kick, play it, get it back, bounce, kick, play it, get it back, but that's not very important, to be honest. Another Omniscience is likely not important either, and we'll pass turn. Okay, there's our second turn. Oh, we did have a second turn. What do I know? I know nothing. All right. Get me back the overflowing insight. We do have to let our opponent go here. We'll play out the land. We have to make sure we put a stop here so that we can respond to our Mirari Conjecture by blinking it back to our hand next turn. So let's flip this now, just in case. Oh my god, so much mana, and no way to use it! Put the stop there. And this is a big turn. This information campaign. Yes, of course. Uh, let's tap those and draw a card. See if it's something we don't mind discarding. 
If it's something we don't mind discarding, and we don't need a Power Stone Shard, so it, that's fine, then we don't have to use a Spell Swindle there. Hmm. Do I want to draw some cards? How many Star of Extinctions are left? I think there's still a Star of Extinction in my deck. No, there isn't. I think it was three. There might be another Conjecture, though. All right. Let's get some cards. We have to be a little afraid of decking. Just a little. All right. In combat, my turn. This goes off. Now, in response, let's play this. We don't even need a kicker, but let's play this to get back our Rari's Conjecture. So this is the doubling effect. Let's replay the Conjecture, because mainly because I think the opponent might go for a counter on it. Nope, they don't. Well, let's keep the loop going with Blink. I'm going to pass through the combat step so that doesn't stop me for everything I might do because I marked it. And now we can double insight them, but first let's uh, do this. Let's dub Star of Extinction our opponent. Bang, bang. Let's play Second Conjecture. Getting back what? Another Blink? So what we want to do is trigger both of these at the same time and then make our opponent draw a million-ish cards. So, but the question is, what can I actually do with all that? I guess as long as they can't kill me and we cut, on the, we cut down their land a bit. So yeah, let's get it going. Target you. God, this feels bad. But with their mana super constrained, I still think we can beat them despite it. We just have to make sure they don't get to unmoored ego me. I suppose I'll put out a Sailor Means, or is it better? It, it's probably better just to hold the Sailor Means as more discard fodder, but I have a land I can do that with. Who knows? The Sailor may matter. Sailor lives matter! All right, end. Eight cards left in the deck. No way to keep it recursive because our Nexus of Fate got exiled. No way to burn the opponent out. Our Expansion Explosion got exiled because I misclicked. So this is, this is the worst of win cons, my friends. This is the worst. Of all the ways to try to win con, this is the worst. Body Racer. Ugh. Make me discard the spell swindle. But I can get one back next turn. Alright, swindle him. Sabotage him. Okay, so they take a blink of an eye. That's fine. I can still blink back my conjecture after I get a sorcery back. In fact, I'm going to get two sorceries. I need to get the overflowing insight. And that's all their mana for the turn. But we can star with one of them to keep stone raining them oh so viciously. And this battle continues. I'm not drawing cards right now. I don't want to deck. I'll save the draw effects for if I need to discard something. Oh god, we're going through the thing. The end step. We're going through the end step. Picking out all the cards to discard. It, it will be here a while. All right, look at that. Oh, hold on. I can't look at it right now. So we definitely need the insight and we definitely need the star. 
And then, so what I need to do is I'm going to drop another star here in a second, but first the Sailor of Means is going to get busy. We need to keep our opponent's mana completely checked. So that's the idea, is keep their mana checked. Quasi-duplicate. What else is over here? I saw a dive down. Not that much of a counterspell deck, but enough sabotages to make me miserable. Now, we need to pay zero to bounce one of our conjectures. Unfortunately, because I would much prefer to have it tripled up for next turn. And now we play the conjecture. And we get the swindle. So that our opponent, again, can't thought erase us and take the overflowing insight. What's left? Not much. And this is going to be for 14. That's not enough. And we lost our blink of an eyes. So is there one more Rarari's Conjecture? I thought there was. I think there's one more Conjecture. All right. If there is, should I draw it now? Yes, I absolutely should. Four cards down. All right, let's try this. Nope, let's try this. Nope, let's try this. Maybe I did cut it down to two conjectures. Ugh, that's very frustrating. Ah, there it is. Okay, so we play it and we get the blink of an eye so that we can keep the conjectures churning and give me just a few more chances. Again, we have to put a stop here so that we don't blow it. There's the erasure. Here's the swindle. Do they have another one? No. Draw. Triggers. Return a sorcery. Let's keep grabbing stars because nothing else matters too much. And then the last one going off. How do I... Alright. Target over here. Return. Hide this stuff. Get the one on three. Resolve. Resolve. All right, drop them. <laughs> We're gonna nuke all of the opponent's lands. Boom. Two cards left in the deck, my god. And again. Knock those out of there. Overflowing insight. Target you. It's not, it's not lethal yet. We need one more turn of it, but we'll get it because this conjecture will get back. I mean, assuming nothing crazy happens, this conjecture will get it back. I don't know what could happen. We don't need the swindle anymore. We can grab the blink. Pass the turn. Seven cards left. Unbelievable. All right, um, mark these again. Who knows, something might need to happen. And we'll, we need to wait for a moment while they discard. And off the top is the omniscience we don't need, the sorcery we do. And let's hide this. 
Yep, we've got two of them on three. This is likely very unnecessary. I admit that. But at this point, I'm so, I'm being so careful. I've come this far. I don't want to lose because I do something too stupid. Target. Target. Draw you to death? I can't believe it. How did we beat Unmoored Ego and my insane misclick from earlier? What a ridiculous game. And fireball your deck. Holy crap. Well, that was exciting. I've never been on such a wild ride. I think my favorite game was the one, the hella embarrassing one with the misclick uh, for the green mana where we had to deck our opponent with overflowing insight. That was, that was an experience. And if you've been here with me through that, we have shared an experience today. As always, thank you very much for watching. Also, special thanks to the patron who asked for the jankest of jank. That would be pain. And if you would like to go over and check out Patreon and subscribe at a $5 level, you too can make a request once a month and I will do my best to make a video out of it. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. My YouTube channel is proudly supported by hauntedflower.com, shipping officially licensed apparel anywhere in the world, and now featuring Magic the Gathering apparel and accessories. If you use the promo code CGB at your checkout, you can save 10% on any order. That's the promo code CGB at checkout on hauntedflower.com. Dot com. That's hauntedflower.com.